Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, on this Friday, May 11th, 2012. Tonight, more government crackdowns on family farms as the Minnesota Department of Agriculture unleashes threats against moms who help distribute fresh farm food. Then, a sober warning from the Japanese ambassador who says the fate of the world depends on reactor number four. An update on the Fukushima cover-up. Plus, the Pentagon is researching narrative networks, a new technology to explore neuro-linguistic engineering of cover stories. This will allow the government to calculate the most unbelievable cover story that the public will swallow. And finally, a bombshell interview with the co-founder of Natural Society, Anthony Gucciardi. In studio with Mike Adams as they discuss the evil of Monsanto and reveal secret documents never before seen until now. All that and more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, before we get to our top story tonight, which is on Fukushima, I want to remind you that there is a fantastic interview coming up later with Anthony Gucciardi from naturalsociety.com, who has breaking news about never-before-seen secret documents exposing the collusion between Monsanto and the USDA over genetically modified alfalfa crops. Now, to our top story. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power facility is in a precarious situation today, and at risk is the future of life as we know it in the Northern Hemisphere. That is not an exaggeration. In fact, U.S. Senator Ron Wyden visited the site in Japan, and he then issued a press release on his website talking about how precarious the situation was. Also, a former Japanese ambassador went there, uh, was there and issued a release talking about how the fate of the world depends on reactor number four. Now, we covered this on Natural News. It's also been covered, of course, at Infowars.com. And in that story, we talked about how the cesium-137 radiation that could be emitted from reactor number four is extreme. And here's the quote from the former Japanese ambassador. Quote, it is no exaggeration to say that the fate of the whole world depends on the number four reactor. And why is that the case? because there are thousands of rods of fully spent and partially spent fuel rods. Uh, this is what, of course, powers the nuclear power plants, but they still contain radioactivity, lots of energy still contained in them, and they're in a pool that could be destroyed by an earthquake or a tsunami striking the Fukushima area. And that could happen at any time. Even a 7.0 to a 7.5 magnitude earthquake could take out that pool and cause this nuclear material to combust, to literally burn right into the open air, releasing a plume of radioactive elements, including cesium-137 and cesium-134, which would then drift into North America from about six days to 10 days, and then it could blanket much of the Northern Hemisphere thereafter. Now, if this could cause North America to become uninhabitable by humans, as you can see. This is a quote from a story that, that I wrote, I believe. Up to 85 times the radiation release from Chernobyl has been calculated. Now, what's interesting is today on the Alex Jones show earlier, we did have nuclear industry expert Arne Gunderson on, and we asked him about that figure 85 times, and we fact-checked it with him. He said he wasn't sure exactly where that was calculated, but he, he then did confirm that at least 20 to 30 times Chernobyl's radiation was contained in the nuclear fuel rods still being stored at the Fukushima Daiichi site. And if there is a fire, if there is an earthquake, if there is even a terrorist attack on that facility, it could unleash unprecedented levels of radiation across North America and around the Northern Hemisphere. So this is a massive risk. And most importantly, this is the big part, he said that even if the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States made the funds available to try to rescue this situation to contain those nuclear spent fuel rods, it would take them, in his words, two to three years to take care of that situation. So between now and two to three years out, and that's even if they decide to solve the situation, we are at risk of an imminent radioactive catastrophe, a 
a nuclear apocalypse, if you will, if there's an earthquake that shatters that pool and causes that nuclear fuel to burn and be emitted into the air. The cover-up of this issue is being called Plume Gate. So search for that on the search engines if you want to learn more about Plume Gate. Moving on to our second story, the Pentagon is researching what they call narrative networks. This is a new spooky technology that would allow the Pentagon to build a, a linguistic weapon, you might call it. They would have a device, a computer, that could calculate what kind of cover story they could come up with that the public would buy and be comfortable with. So if they're planning, let's say, a false flag attack, if they're planning another imperialistic war attack on some innocent third world or developing nation, if they're planning perhaps gun confiscation in the United States or war on the American people even, theoretically, they could come up with a cover story that most Americans would buy because it was calculated by this neuro-linguistic programming computer. This is some scary stuff. I've never seen anything like this. When we think about weapons built by the government, we normally think of, you know, things that explode, maybe nuclear weapons. We don't normally think about linguistic weapons, but that's exactly what this is. It's a kind of hijacking of the brain. It's kind of reverse engineering the way that we process language. And here is what the BBC says about this. It says, it, it says that U.S. officials will have a device that could advise them what to say generating a story based on a scientific understanding of the brain's inner workings to soothe tempers and calm the mood of the population. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what they need? Stay calm, everybody. You're only being enslaved. You're only having your guns confiscated. You're only eating radioactive food and being vaccinated with chemical adjuvants that will eat your brain and lobotomize you. Stay calm. Stay quiet. Stay safe. That's the new American slogan. All right, moving on to our next story. This concerns the dangers of modern science. Now, for the record, I am not against science, not real science. In fact, I'm an advocate of science. I, I've been trained as a scientific thinker. In, in, in fact, I went to engineering school and I took courses in, in microbiology and anthropology and genetics, in fact. But I put out an issue, uh, an urgent warning today on Natural News. It's called SOS, Stop Out of Control Science. And the website for that is just sos.naturalnews.com if you want to see the infographic. Now, let me explain why this matters. If you look at what is threatening us today across our planet, just look at the issues that we cover here at InfoWars, things that Alex covers on his show, that Kurt Nimmo covers on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. What do they all have in common? Well, think about it. It's GMOs threatening our crops, threatening our fertility. It's vaccines threatening our fertility, threatening our population. It's nanotechnology, it's advanced artificial intelligence, it's robot drones that the Pentagon has and vehicles that drive themselves now. This is a fact. A vehicle's been licensed in Nevada, been given a driver's license, and the driver is a robot. Seriously, that has happened. So what do all these things have in common? The drug-resistant antibacteria uh, in hospitals, the super weeds, they all have in common science gone bad dangerous science. So we must learn to distinguish the good science, which is what you see on your screen there, from the dangerous science. And that's what this infographic is all about. Good science is the quest for understanding and knowledge, and that's good. And that's good for humanity. We need that. But dangerous science is the quest for profit and power at the expense of humanity. Look at the next slide there, if you would, please. A lot more to cover here. This is called the precautionary principle, and this is what we need to get back to. If an action or a policy has a suspected risk of causing harm, the burden of proof that it is not harmful falls on those taking the action. In other words, scientists must prove their wild experiments are safe before unleashing them onto the world. That would mean that GMOs could only be experimented on in tight quarantine situations. You can't just spread those GMO seeds on a field and let the wind blow them around the world and cause self-replicating genetic pollution. Now we have other information on this infographic. In fact, uh, the next slide should be five levels of the dangers of science. I want to go into some detail on this for you so you truly understand how much danger we literally face today. Level one dangerous science is not so dangerous. It's just physical contamination. It, uh, soot from smokestacks, for example. It's just physical. It's not a chemical. It's not radioactive. No, not really such a big deal. It could be cleaned up. Imagine floating plastic in the Pacific Ocean. It's a physical contamination. We can deal with that. 
But level two dangerous science is chemical contamination. The example of this is core exit in the Gulf of Mexico. BP using that to clean up the oil spill there. It chemically reacts with biological systems and can cause great harm to human beings, animals, and plants. Now the third level of dangerous science goes even further. This is radiological pollution, which can't be cleaned up like a chemical. It can't be neutralized like a chemical. Radioactive pollution continues on for decades or even centuries depending on the isotope. And in the case of cesium-137, which would be released in very large quantities from Fukushima, the half-life of that element, that isotope, is 30 years, meaning that even 90 years or 120 years from now, we still have very high contamination levels of cesium-137 in our soils. So nuclear radiation is a very dangerous contaminant, and that's not even the worst, because we have level four science this is where it gets really scary because level four is self-replicating pollution, pollution that can multiply itself. Now imagine, remember the movie Terminator where the Terminator robots were being built by a factory run by Terminator robots controlled by a giant computer that gained awareness and decided to eliminate humankind? Well, that was science fiction. But today we have science fact in the realm of GMOs. For example, GMOs replicate and you can never recall them and put them back in the box. It has escaped into the wild. It is self-replicating genetic pollution. Superbugs that escape from hospitals are in the exact same category. They replicate. You can go to a hospital, catch a superbug, a, a, an antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria, take it home, and then it begins to replicate in your body there and you could pass it on to somebody else. That was created as a result of the abuse of, quote, scientific antibiotic drugs, which were approved by the FDA under what they call scientific principles. We also have the issue of nanotechnology. Now today, nanotech is not that dangerous, but what if scientists developed self-replicating nanotechnology robots? Microscopic critters, you might say, and we'll show an image of that later, but they could self-replicate and eat the environment at the same time. The globe could be covered with a nanotech, nanotech self-replicating gray goo that could literally consume us all. That is science fact, in, or at least theoretical fact, that could be happening in the very near future. Now, the fifth level of the dangers of science is artificial intelligence. Today, human beings have a limited cognitive capacity. It can be very high, but it is still limited. Nevertheless, we are smart enough and advanced enough as a species to develop systems that can be more intelligent than we are. And this is especially true with the arrival of so-called quantum computing. Imagine an artificially intelligent system built on, for example, 512 qubits, they're called. These are bits in the quantum computing world. Such a system could be fed every surveillance tape that's ever been scanned by the NSA or governments everywhere. It could monitor in real time every conversation, every email, every phone call, every television broadcast, everything that's happening in our world. It could model the stock market. It could model weather systems. That computer system, based on just 512 qubits in the quantum world, would be essentially a god. Uh, in turn, I don't mean a religious god, obviously. I mean god in terms of its power total power, total knowledge of everything happening on our planet, and it could then gain awareness and use that power to say, well, humanity's only purpose for existence was to create me. Therefore, humanity has served its role, goodbye, and it could then decide to destroy us. Now, how could that happen? Well, imagine if we're all riding along in Google robot cars, that AI computer could just send a signal to all the robot cars to just drive everybody off a cliff or cause mass collisions or never let anybody out of their cars, or kill everybody with heat from the heater. Who knows? The point is, if AI takes over our world, and I realize much of this is science fiction today, but it's happening, it's becoming more of science reality as we move forward, and there are no precautions in place for this. That's the point. SOS means stop out of control science while we still have a chance, while we can save humanity from these self-replicating systems or these AI systems that could literally unleash a Terminator type of system. Now there are some solutions, and I believe that's the next bit of information we have on this. Uh, can I see that next uh, slide, please, so I can read a couple of important points? Yes, yeah, some of the solutions. We've got to recall this out of control science. 
We've got to put it back in the box, back in quarantine, where it's okay for scientists to play in their little sandboxes, but not put the entire human world at risk, all of civilization at risk. We've got to require proof of their safety before allowing scientific experiments to be unleashed upon the world. Now let's skip ahead and go right to today's top 12 most dangerous scientific projects that are going on today. We've got some pretty cool graphics for you on this too. This is the top 12. Uh, this is in my view, you might have your own opinion, but here's what I think are the 12 most dangerous things. Number one, nuclear power. We've seen that with Fukushima and how scientists cannot anticipate the risk of accidents that could unleash nuclear disaster. Number two, GMOs, self-replicating genetic pollution could be unleashed across our world at any time and alter our seed crops and potentially collapse the food supply. Number three, self-replicating nanotechnology, little microscopic robots that could eat the world and replace it with gray goo. Not a fun, not a fun situation. Number four, bioweapons, self-replicating microscopic weapons being researched by the U.S. government in military facilities. They might release this as the next false flag attack, not fully realizing the long-term implications of unleashing a bioweapon on our world. Number five, atmospheric experiments such as HARP, high-altitude spraying that you, you might know as chemtrails. What are the long-term implications of that? No one really knows. It's a crazy experiment with our atmosphere. I think it's funny how Al Gore says we shouldn't change our atmosphere with CO2, but yet the government's changing our atmosphere all the time with HARP and these other chemtrail experiments. Next item on the list is artificial intelligence. AI, as we talked about, when coupled with killer drone hardware, which has already been developed, we showed footage on the Alex Jones Show a couple of weeks ago of airborne drones flying in, in unison. They can fly into your house, they can carry weapons, they can carry, uh, not now they can carry weapons, but very soon they'll be able to carry weapons. They do carry cameras now, and they can actually fly and surveil you and uh, eventually attack you. The military obviously has much larger drones that can attack you right now. Uh, what other projects do we have to show there, guys? I know we we'll put some good stuff together. Here we go. Number seven, particle accelerator physics experiments, the Large Hadron Collider near Geneva is where this is going on. This is where scientists are trying to discover the so-called God particle. Yeah, they think God is found in a particle, and they're going to try to smash atoms together until they can find that God particle. Well, <laughs> folks, it's not a particle. I got to tell you that. And smashing stuff together may give you some information about the universe, but without wisdom, without philosophy, without ethics, you're still just a little infant scientist playing in your sandbox. Believe, believe me, you need some ethics first. Technology without wisdom is suicide. Thank you for putting that up there. That's, that's what I say. The next scientific project that is gravely dangerous, and thank you guys for keeping up with me moving around here, pollinator disruption chemicals. The honeybees are being decimated across our world right now. Pollinators are, of course, crucial to the food supply. And it's the synthetic pesticides that are causing them to disappear. Number nine, weaponized vaccines. We've seen before, we caught Baxter Pharmaceuticals shipping live viral material in the vaccines all around the world, and that was gonna be made into vaccines to be injected into people. Guess what? Vaccines are the vector through which infectious disease is inserted into the population. The vaccines are the way to spread measles, to spread the flu, to spread whooping cough. They are all weaponized today. And number 10 is antibiotics. We're already in an era of the end of antibiotics. In fact, the World Health Organization is already on the record right now saying that the era of antibiotics is over. Science has failed, completely failed. The superbugs today, the infections today are worse than ever. And it's because of the overuse of antibiotics, which is just another grand failure in the world of quack science or corporate run science. Again, I'm not against real science. I'm against this distorted, corporate-run, fascism, globalist, quack science that they parade around as real science, but it isn't real. One more item from the list, or two more. Water pollution with fluoride and mercury. There's another dangerous scientific experiment. You notice how when they push fluoride, they always tell you, oh, it's scientific. Yeah, your local dentist says you should drink this toxic chemical because it's scientific. <laughs> they just use that word for everything. They could just say, uh, you should eat in infected lobster tails and moose testicles because it's scientific. And if you believe that, <laughs> you should, maybe you should work for the TSA if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Let's go on the next one before I get too out of control. Number 12, nuclear weapons and the global threat of nuclear winter. Yeah, nuclear weapons are a threat 
to humanity. So altogether, those are 12 projects that are being done in the name of science today that threaten humanity. And I say, let's have safe science. You know, let's have science with ethics. Let's have science with philosophy, a philosophy of protecting life, of protecting liberty, of protecting seeds. This is what we've got to get down to. Like I said, technology without wisdom is suicide. And right now in America and across the world, we are being in a way suicided by modern science out of control. So go to sos.naturalnews.com to see that infographic. It's a complete nonprofit effort. Just share the word. We've got to rein in dangerous science and practice safe science. <laughs> Isn't that true? They say, you know, they say mothers against drunk driving don't drive drunk. But yet scientists are essentially driving down the highway of, hu of the human future drunk and, and uh, completely hopped up on all kinds of chemicals with no safety mechanisms, no seatbelt, no headlights, nothing. We're going to crash if we don't do something about this. All right, next story. The Michigan MDA has unleashed threats against moms who helped distribute fresh farm food. Yeah, following in the footsteps of California, which conducted armed raids on raw some foods, the state of Michigan, or Minnesota in this case, sorry, there's so many states engaged in tyranny. I'm starting to mix them all up. The state of Minnesota has now threatened 10 mothers with scary sounding letters that say criminal charges can be brought against them for allowing their homes to be used as drop off points so that their neighbors can pick up free food as well. No, not free food, I'm sorry, uh, fresh food from local farms. So you get it, the farms sell food to people, but they don't have a retail store in the middle of the city, so they bring a truckload of food down to a, like a, a neighbor, and they unload it there, and then all the moms in the neighborhood come pick up the food and take it home. It's fresh from the farm. What's wrong with that? Well, I guess if you're the Obama administration and you want to destroy America, this is the great way to start doing it. Have sort of like a a fascist slash communist takeover of the American farming system, destroy the farms, destroy the food, and then you control the people. Remember, food can be used as a weapon by the globalists, and this attack on the farms is one way for them to accomplish that. Let me give a shout out, actually a call to action item for those who are in Minnesota to join the Monday morning rally at 7 a.m. on the footsteps of the Capitol in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There is a rally there, begins at 7 a.m., going to be lots of people engaged in farm freedom, food freedom, peaceful protest. Don't make it violent. Keep it peaceful. We are protesting these insane, tyrannical laws and enforcement actions by the state of Minnesota against innocent moms and innocent farmers who are doing nothing more than creating real food, fresh food, and making it available to the people. These attacks on farmers are entirely un-American. This is a, a violation of everything that we believe in here in America. And finally tonight, we have a big breaking story on where does your investment money go? State Street Mutual Fund, turns out, is invested in many of the largest corporations that we might consider to be globalist corporations engaged in the development and the selling of products of questionable safety. And this is some original research I did over at Natural News. We haven't even published an article on this yet, but I wanted to break this news here on InfoWars Nightly News. Where is your money going in your investment funds? Look at your own investment portfolio. Look at your own retirement funds. Check your employer's information. Find out, is your money invested in State Street? If so, then your money is going to support all of the following companies. Johnson & Johnson, uh, Pfizer, these are the pharmaceutical and vaccine manufacturers. And in, beyond Pfizer, then we have weapons and military companies like General Electric, Lockheed Martin, which of course engaged in lots of weapons manufacturing and all kinds of uh, war supporting technology. And then Honeywell, in, in addition, GE, by the way, of course, was in, involved in Fukushima, the construction of the Fukushima power plant. In the banking industry, State Street is heavily invested in J.P. Morgan Chase. What a lovely so it reminds me of a nice uncle. Eh, my uncle's J.P. Morgan Chase. Very nice uncle, cares about the economy, don't they? Wells Fargo is also on the list. Bank of America, Citigroup, and Morgan Stanley, all are the, just the most loving financial institutions that care about America's economy. That's what I say. Yeah, we should give them more money. I think, let's just give them all our money. Why not? They, they already control the money supply anyway. In the oil and energy sector, State Street is invested in Exxon. There's another loving company. Chevron, they did some great work down in Ecuador. 
yeah, poisoning the rainforest down there. And of course, uh, ConocoPhillips can't let ConocoPhillips off the hook here. These are all where your money is going if you're invested in State Street. In the surveillance and spying technology companies, State Street is also heavily invested in these tech giants, Apple. Yes, Apple, the very company that the city of Austin just gave millions of dollars to. Microsoft and Google as well, some of our very favorite info gathering companies. State Street's also invested in consumer product companies Procter & Gamble, which as we revealed in previous reports, has members on its board that have ties to weapons manufacturers and military companies. Also, Philip Morris and Walmart. Yeah, this is like a who's who of the very finest and brightest corporate leaders in our world today. And in the processed food category, State Street is invested in Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Oh yeah, so if you want to support the global corporate fascist takeover of the world, put more money into State Street. They'll take good care of it for you, making profits for you by selling more pharmaceuticals and weapons and chemicals and processed food. And it wasn't Pepsi even involved in using fetal cells in the development of its PepsiCo flavoring products? Yeah, hey, you like, you like baby parts in your soda R&D projects? Uh, you like vaccines? You like weapons? You like big global banks? Put more money in State Street. I think they'll run this as a, a free advertising spot for them, <laughs> like State Street promo. Or if you want to combat that, if you want to have victory against the globalists, sell all holdings in State Street. And now, this is what it comes down to. You all have a choice, my friends. This is really what it is. A lot of you, you know, in your hearts, you are, uh, you're against the globalist agenda. You believe in freedom. You believe in liberty. You're on board with what we talk about here at Natural News and Infowars. But guess what? If you look in your portfolio, unfortunately, you may have inadvertently given money to all these companies because you're invested in State Street. So take a look at that very carefully. Don't support the globalist agenda. Take your money out of that mutual fund and you will help create a better world for all of us. And coming up right after the break, just a really incredible interview with Anthony Gucciardi from naturalsociety.com who's got breaking news and some secret documents that are being shown here for the first time right here on InfoWars Nightly News. Before we get to that, let me read you today's daily quote. This is from Thomas Jefferson. Enlighten the people generally, and tyranny and oppressions of body and mind will vanish like evil spirits at the dawn of day. Very well said, Mr. Jefferson, one of our greatest heroes and someone whose wisdom should remain part of our culture, but it seems to have been disappearing across the mainstream minds for some reason. Let's get it back into their minds by spreading the word about Jefferson and all of those who fight for liberty and justice in America. We'll be right back after this break with the interview with Anthony Gucciardi. Stay with us. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use doesn't require electricity purify water from lakes streams ponds and wells this filter system leaves in beneficial minerals which is key save money by not buying bottled water and avoid bpa that leaches from the plastic pro pure is the best gravity fed filter out there it's what my family uses infowars.com already has the lowest price on pro pure but if you add the promo code water at checkout you get an additional 10 percent off at infowars.com you can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger hosting tonight. Thank you for continuing to join us. We've always got really interesting breaking news for you here on InfoWars Nightly News. And tonight we have a special guest 
He's a researcher and a contributing writer to Infowars.com. He's also the co-founder of NaturalSociety.com. None other than Anthony Gucciardi right here in the studio with breaking news about Monsanto and collusion with the USDA. Anthony, great to have you in the studio, man. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, we've got some amazing information, an exclusive letter actually that shows Monsanto may have been planting genetically modified alfalfa and subsequently contaminating entire organic food supply per se, uh, before it was actually allowed and approved by the USDA. Now, I understand you have letters that the public has never seen. They're being published here on InfoWars Nightly News first. And how, how did you come by these letters? I don't know how much you can share, actually, but yeah. what's the story? Well, there's a lot of information. I can't obviously share everything with you. We've blocked out some of the, uh, some of the personal information from the contact here, but we have a, we have a letter. Um, to the USDA from Cal West Seed Company explaining how Monsanto's Roundup Ready genes, which were from the uh, alfalfa seeds, were actually being found before they were approved by the USDA, which was in 2005. Okay, so wait a minute, Let me, if you don't mind me just paraphrasing. Sure. So this letter proves that the genetically modified alfalfa was being grown and harvested before it was ever approved by the USDA. That's correct. Um, here we have in the letter, it says, we first discovered the unintended presence of the Roundup Ready gene in our conventional alfalfa seed in 2005. Uh, it would appear that there were a significant amount of Roundup Ready alfalfa seed in production in place in 2005 prior to deregulation, which is approval, approval. by the USDA. Given the nature of this crop, this is concerning to us. And this is to the USDA, so they were fully aware of it, and they didn't address ah, this. This is a smoking gun. Of, uh, that proves collusion between the USDA and the genetically modified biotech industry then. And it was being shipped also, you'll see here, to uh, an organic seed supplier. So this could, and this was just one random testing. Right, right. And, and they just dismiss it. Could you imagine if the TSA found someone with a bomb in the airport, they would lock it down. But they, they, don't, they don't even seem to care. Well, that's a, great, that's a great metaphor because this is really a genetic time bomb that is loose in the wild, just like you said, like a terrorist comes into the airport with a bomb in their pocket, let's say, or their underwear, as the TSA loves to, to check oh, yeah. for. But this is a genetic time bomb in the crops, and this letter was sent to the USDA in what year? What, when did they get it this? It was between 2005 and 2007. They knew in 2005, and they received this particular one in 2007. Wow. So they had, they had years and years to do something about it, but they just let Monsanto go. Now, to your knowledge, and I know you're a great researcher, so I know you've checked this out, did the USDA ever admit, following this, that they had allowed Monsanto, or, or no. that Monsanto was doing this without approval? The USDA says nothing on, on the issue. Total they silence. just completely ignore it, uh, despite the fact that it could mean that organic food is being contaminated by GMOs. It could mean that traditional seeds were planted and just contaminating crops. And, and in fact, there's farmers now that are trying to sell their crops overseas, and they're being rejected because it has too high a percentage of GMO contamination inside of it. So they don't even know. It's, it's really just widespread. Uh, on your website, naturalsociety.com, you've covered a lot about Monsanto and, and the USDA, GMOs, and so on. Does this, in your opinion, fit a pattern of collusion and cover-ups at the highest levels of government concerning GMOs? Oh, absolutely. The USDA has a very serious relationship with Monsanto. In fact, they actually decided to hasten uh, the period in which the crops are approved for use. So in, generally, they have safety testings that could last an extensive period of time. Uh, in some cases, as short as a month, which is ridiculous. A month. They have no idea what the long-term consequences it's are. It's just a little sprout. I mean, yeah. what are they talking about? That's absolutely nothing. But they're actually hastening it now because they want Monsanto to have the competitive financial edge. And it's actually here on a Bloomberg report. Uh, the goal is to cut in half the time needed to approve biotech crops from the current average of three years down way low. Approvals that took just six months in the 1990s have lengthened because of increased public interest, more legal challenges, and the advent of national organic food standards. So, oh, so we shouldn't have standards. Yeah. And they're, oh, saying, they're saying that activism is causing a cog in the wheel. So it's oh, actually how showing how effective it is. They go on to say... They are trying to work the system so they can dismiss the public comments more quickly and easily in order to speed things up. Well, how hard is it for them to hit delete right now anyway? What are they going to do, just hit delete faster? And look at the Just Label campaign. They had a million signatures, and the FD FDA said, sorry, doesn't count. I remember that. Right. You covered that. What did they, they deleted most of those signatures and just dumped it down to, what, 10,000 or something? It was even lower than that. Yeah, it was in the hundreds, and they, they said, this doesn't count. Sorry. Anthony, so what we're seeing here, this is a clear example of total runaway corporate fascism. This is, this is corporate-controlled government for the, for the benefit of the corporations 
that is betraying the interests of the people, in this case, betraying the potentially the future of the food supply. And highlighting activists as the root cause of the problem. They're saying yeah. we can't get the GMOs out quick enough because these pesky activists, you know, these, these pesky individuals like us and Alex Jones, they're, they're on air saying how bad they are. How dare they say that? They don't need testing. They don't need anything. This needs to get out right away or else fin uh, financial um, problems can come from Monsanto. We should have a giant victory cheer right now then. Yeah, I mean, it's actually should, good news. It's sure really good news. Go out for all the nightly news viewers, because you have been effective. Alex has been effective. Your website, my website, as a as a team, we have been effective in throwing some wrenches into their machinery. Here's a USDA representative in Bloomberg saying it's those activists. They they're putting a cog in the wheel. Those dang activists! How dare they tell the truth about you? How how dare they demand GMOs be labeled so that consumers can can actually see what's in their food? And then oh my God. Exactly. And then when we, uh, we're pushing for labeling, Monsanto says, oh, we'll sue you if you try to label it, because there's no difference at all. They, they threaten Vermont, right? Yeah. With a lawsuit. And as you mentioned once on naturalnews.com, you said if, if they were so proud of their crops, if they were so proud and they said they're so safe, why would they be against labeling it? They should show it off. Uh, do you happen to know what's the status of the Vermont situation with the, the well, labeling laws? They're terrified. They don't want to be sued by Monsanto. Who would? action they're taking? Uh, they're, they're not taking much action at all. <laughs> <laughs> so they're terrified. Yeah, they're very terrified. Uh, some of the legislators are going and they're saying, well, you know, we're going to take approach. We're going to take a, a very slow approach. We'll look at the, everything. But Monsanto scared them off, for sure. Well, now wait a minute. This, is, this reminds me of the situation in Texas, where the Texas legislature was ready to pass the laws that said we're going to outlaw TSA in Texas airports. Then the federal government comes in and says we're going to have an, an air embargo against the state of Texas. We'll have fighter jets shoot down airplanes or whatever, yeah. whatever they said. I mean, it was like almost a declaration of war. So now we have Monsanto threatening Vermont. States' rights. Not only that, but this is like a runaway corporate thug where the corporation is more powerful than the state. That, that's, I mean, George Orwell warned us about exactly that. It's all tied in. It's all tied in. Here's F. William Engdahl. He says, in a June 1998 interview, USDA spokesman Willard Phelps defined the U.S. government policy on Terminator seeds, which is Monsanto seeds. Yeah. He explained that the USDA wanted technology to be, quote, widely licensed and made expeditiously available to many seed companies. So here we have them working together. They also went on, he meant agri agribusiness GMO giants like Monsanto, DuPont, or Dow. In this case, specifically Monsanto. The USDA was open about their reasons. They wanted to get the Terminator seeds into developing worlds where the Rockefeller Foundation had made eventual proliferation of genetically modified crops the heart of its GMO strategy from the beginning of its rice genome project in 1984. So they're trying as hard as they possibly can to get these seeds in the third world nations, just explode the financial income, just get it out, because it's, it's killing people worldwide for sure. We know that. Well, I think there's a bigger question here, and I want to ask for your comments on this. This is also about corporate ownership over all property in nature. When we talk about corporate patents on genes and seeds and medicines and even animals, didn't Monsanto try to patent a pig? Maybe they even yes. awarded a patent. I don't remember. They're what. going after chickens. They're going after many, many. Yeah, things. they want to own life. Trees. Trees. Yes, they want to own everything. So the 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 real risk here, even though GMOs themselves are are a huge risk. Isn't it also that we have a risk of living in a world that is entirely dominated by corporate ownership? That, and, and that that ownership is enforced by government uh, soldiers and henchmen at gunpoint. Yes, it comes down to patents, too, because when Monsanto plants genetically modified crops and they go over to the organic um, field next door and it starts contaminating the organic produce, then most, Monsanto owns that. Because yeah. it's, it's patented seed, they're patenting, patenting life. And that's why India slammed them with biopiracy charges, because they're saying that they own something that you really can't own. Well, my understanding is that presently about 20% of the human genome is owned by various research universities and, I think that's climbing now as well. and, and corporations. Yeah, it might be. I think it's even higher. 30%? Yeah. yeah. So think about this when you have a baby, you are committing piracy according to the corporate lawyers. Just because you've replicated a patented genetic code, and there is your baby, now you owe royalties to the corporation. If Monsanto can sue the farmer for the seeds, they could sue you for having babies. How about when you eat genetically modified corn, too? The expression of the, of the genes in the corn goes into your own body, sure. so you are essentially your patented technology as well. If you really want to get down to it, you know, everything is patented, wow. and it gets to a point where they can own basically everything. They can claim ownership over your body. Claim over, they, 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 right, they claim it. They claim it. Right, but of course, what, what people like you and I and Alex Jones and many others out there, the activists who are standing up for truth and, and fundamental human rights is what we're talking yes. about here. 
we are, as this document admits, we are already achieving success at holding these people back. I want to ask you personally, because you you are one of the younger individuals who's come on the scene as a really hardcore researcher. You've uncovered some really incredible breaking news. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you deserve credit, and your website, naturalsociety.com, has done amazing work. What got you motivated to, uh, you know, to join the alternative media like this and be, you know, you're putting yourself at some, at some risk by putting your name out there and telling the truth. It's always risky in a dishonest world. Particularly this document, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. So come on the air. What, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to release this document. Well, I actually became sick um, about seven years ago. I had a very debilitating disease. I had Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Oh, yeah. That and uh, I was, my doctor gave me steroids, which was very ineffective. <laughs> I slept one day from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. the next day. Oh. And um, so I, I, was, I was sick. I thought I might die. You know, everyone around was freaking out about Lyme disease. What are we going to do? What's going to happen? Um, so what I eventually did was I started taking colloidal silver, started taking oregano oil, started changing my life because I went on the, online. And the internet is really the, the new paradigm of information, period. Sure. You know, you, you can go talk to your doctor all you want, and he's probably going to feed you a bunch of, you know, lies. You go on the <laughs> yeah. internet yeah. And, and charge you prescription fees for them, too. Exactly. And that's not to say you can self-diagnose yourself on the internet with, you know, WebMD and everything like that. That's all, that's all to get you to go to your doctor anyway. But I started yeah. finding alternatives and started trying them and saying, wow, these actually work. And then what happened was I went to my doctor and I said, I started taking this uh, Supernatural Silver, which is a sponsor, actually. I found it on the Alex Jones Show. Um, started taking oregano oil, changing my diet, eating raw foods, 100% organic. And he said, oh, that's just a coincidence. It must have been the steroids. Oh, really? He told yeah. us it's a coincidence. Just a complete coincidence. Yeah, I had a doctor that told me that my uh, cure of my pre-diabetic condition was Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking? Yeah, it was wishful thinking. Wow. It's like, hey, where's Alex's magic wand? We need to wave that around here right now. <laughs> yeah. Wave the magic wand, wishful thinking. Wishful thinking Yours was wand. a coincidence. Absolutely. Amazing. And then and then we have uh, hit pieces going out. I've actually told my story before, and I've had a hit piece uh, from someone from Harvard. And they said, oh, well, that's that's impossible, blah, blah, blah. And they go and go and dissect my site, and they say, oh, Natural Society says that uh, positive thinking can improve your health. Obviously, they they're quacks. That? Yeah, they deny that. They say there's no there's no evidence whatsoever. And then we have studies coming out that the people you know people who wake up in the morning and think of positive things like a spring day or clouds, they eat more healthy throughout the day. They eat oh, more raw foods. They exercise more because they feel empowered. But that's that's you know that's not true. Well, the mind is worthless. You're not being effective until you get attacked. Yes. And then, then when they target you, then you know you're making an impact, Anthony. Um, I, I'm fortunate that I have a really common name, Mike Adams. That's, yeah. that's my real name. And so there are a lot of Mike Adams out there in the world. I've been accused of being a car thief, a crack dealer. There's a football <laughs> player who's a Mike Adams. I there, saw that, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of Mike Adams out there. So the, you know, your name is very unique. No one's going to find another Anthony Gucciardi, I think, out there. Yeah, which is, which is a big target. Right, right. You know, so, you Google yeah. my name, who knows what you might see. Oh, I, yeah, who knows. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe we'll help you out. We'll, we'll link to you with, with your name to a page that tells the truth about your story. Thank you. How about that? There we go. <laughs> good, good. So uh, let me ask you, is there anything else on this story about the Monsanto GMOs, Absolutely. first of all? Absolutely. Uh, F. William Engdahl continues here. Oh, we have the magic we wand. Have the magic, let's let's, let's we wave have it around. The magic wand. <laughs> this is, uh, what about the fairy dust? Is there fairy dust that goes with, <laughs> with this? <laughs> all right, so, so next time, Anthony, next time you go to your doctor, take him this, tell him this is what cured you of Lyme disease. The magic disease. wand. <laughs> yes. Anything okay. besides colloidal silver, that's probably more likely in his eyes. This is, this is really, this is like something from the Renaissance Festival. Yeah. Like a real craftsman made Maybe this. Maybe they might use that, an MD might use that to try and cre treat your cancer. <laughs> this is great. Okay, uh, sorry to interrupt so, you, go ahead. Uh, Engdahl continues, USDA's Phelps, which was the spokesman, stated that the U.S. government's goal in fostering the wi widest possible development of the Terminator technology was to increase the value of propri proprietary seed owned by U.S. seed companies and to open up new markets in the second and third world countries. So they're dispersing the seed. Right. Under W2L, W2L rules on free trade and agriculture, countries... Wait, genetic imperialism is what comes... GMO imperialism. Yes. That's, what, that's the paraphrase of what you just read. Exactly. Uh, countries are forbidden to impose their own national health restrictions on GMO imports if it is deemed to be an unfair trade barrier. Wow. Well, remember the, the uh, WikiLeaks leaked some memos out of Spain where I believe it was the U.S. diplomats there that said if Spain doesn't go along with the, uh, the GMO agenda, we will punish them. Absolutely. And it's, own words. And it's even deeper than that. In so, fact, the report goes on to say uh, that many U.S. diplomats, if not all, it doesn't specify that some do not, Many, if not all, U.S. diplomats work directly for Monsanto. Wow, can we highlight that? Uh, 
Put that document over here for the cam. Where is that? Reporting. Many U.S. diplomats work directly for Monsanto. And then we have someone who's uh, good friends with George Bush saying that we'll start trade wars with anyone who doesn't agree uh, that that biotech needs to be put on the scene. Yep, that's what they do. They, the, these laws are created to, to, to serve the global elite interests. That's and what it's all is about. Is there any wonder why the USDA didn't respond to the, uh, the, the damning letter that we have? Well, so, so what do you think then, Anthony, as, as an activist, as, a, as a, one of the voices that's really making a difference in this realm, if we can't sign petitions that the USDA pays attention to, and I don't see any protests happening at the Monsanto headquarters right now, although, although there were protests in California. They shut it down shut for down a day. Down, right. Um, how can the people, and I mean the people on the right, on the left, in the middle, everywhere, this is not a Republican versus Democrat issue. This is the people, life on earth, protecting the future of the gene genetic code of planet. the biosphere. The, the, the entire planet. How can the people, in your view, actually stop these crimes against nature? Well, they have to spread the information, get the, get the documents out. But besides that, they have to start buying organic, GMO-free. They have to start uh, emailing uh, calling their p political leaders, saying we need to demand labeling. Uh, and we need to stop being afraid of Monsanto. I've gotten death threats. I've gotten anonymous death threats. I've, I've probably gotten 100 anonymous death threats, whether it be really? calling my personal cell phone, which no one has the number for, really? or getting emails saying, yeah. They got sent, your, someone got your personal, personal cell phone number? Personal cell phone number, wow. left me a message from an unknown number. I tried to track it. Uh, we've had people attack our site from uh, Russia with using a bunch of proxies, and they went yeah, in, yeah. they took down uh, one oh, of our welcome, biggest... welcome to the Russian hacker uh, target club. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. They always do that. Denial of service attacks to the yeah, U.S. They yeah. take down, uh, they took, they, they actually went into my website, and the only thing they took down was my article that was blowing up on Monsanto. That's it. They didn't take anything else down. What does that tell you? Why would any, uh, why would a third party, a disinterested third party, right. hack the site and take down a Monsanto article? No, no, the, the, the real hackers out there, yeah. the white hat hackers, which is really most hackers, they are anti-Monsanto, they're anti-corporate control, they're anti-fascism, they're, they're anti-Fed reserve. You know, the real hackers are mostly sort of libertarian, open source minded type of people, yeah. which is the kind of people that you and I are. Exactly, and they, they would mean, never do something like that. It's, it's, more, exactly. the, it's more the corrupt the corrupt level of individuals that work for some type of military they're service. Or, yeah, they're paid. They're, yeah, we know. One day, Anthony, we all have to do a big expose of the paid trolls and hackers who are attacking all of these oh, webs. Yeah. They attack InfoWars, they attack Natural News, they attack National Society, they attack others, and they, they, they're only partially effective. And we built a lot of defenses in, and you have too, your site's back up after they took it down that one yeah. time. I know InfoWars goes to great lengths to, to be protected against all of that. So they're not as effective as they would oh, like no. to be. And, and the reason they're doing this, though, is because we're spreading the information so well. That's right. And you, you see the comment list. I can check on my comment list. And there's, uh, you know, 50 of the same IPs, the same computer. Someone typing uh, comments like, oh, you idiot, Monsanto's great, you know, and really vulgar comments or, or death threats to me. Yes. Or death threats to other people or death threats to uh, elected officials so that someone will come to me right. and come to my uh, you know, house, knock on the door. Why are you having death threats on your website when it's actually no, them? that happened in the InfoWars. It does. That, Alex talked about that. Someone had posted a death threat on on their website, and then the FBI came knocking uh, and visited Infowars because some anonymous person had posted the death threat on it. And they that. say you said that because it's on your right. site, and that's how that's how no. CISP and everything else could work like that. If you have a, something that someone writes on your website, so basically discussion will be censored. It'll be turned off. We'll have to turn it off because of right. the uh, insane bills. The the other thing to watch out for, and we all have to be careful of this. All of us in the alternative information industry is watch out for the trolls that try to create infighting. Like suppose someone from uh, goes onto your website and tries to get us arguing with each other. Let's say they say, oh, I'm from Natural News and I think you suck. Or someone Absolutely. from your website does the same thing to me. And then they get us fighting with each other, which doesn't work because we know we're not that way. Or how about someone submitting the incorrect story to both of us at the, at the same time? That's Believe, happened. That's happened. We, we've spoken about that. Someone yeah. submitted an incorrect story to us and we go ahead and we type it in and it was, it was falsified. Right. It was incorrect. And <laughs> right. that, that's a perfect right. example of them infiltrating the camp. I'd say to those watching this, I know we're getting into some really interesting behind the scenes kind of topics now, yeah. but those watching this may not really have a full idea of how much does go on behind the scenes. It's, it's, it's much more than just folks delivering uh, the news and writing the stories and publishing the information. Uh, there are, are great lengths that we all have to go through for personal protection, for uh, server protection, for information protection, because there are elements out there that are paid to discredit us, to attack us, to threaten us, to scare us, 
even maybe to try to physically attack us. Oh, absolutely. Which is why I, I carry concealed, man. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the way to do today. it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's people out there, and there's look at the mother. The mother who uh, attacked Monsanto in uh, Argentina, she got them shut down nearby because uh, the birth defect rate was so absurdly high. And there's also a lawsuit about the birth defects um, from as a result of Monsanto's uh, Roundup Ready, you know, pesticides, everything like that, herbicides, yeah. the Roundup herbicide, which is destroying the entire biosphere, by the way. But then they go and they send her anonymous death threats, too. It's just so obvious. And, and look, at, look at the kind of company we're dealing with, though. Here's one. Yeah. Uh, Monsanto caught abusing workers in slave-like conditions. So <laughs> not only are they modifying everything, despite the study showing that it's causing organ damage, specifically in the liver, which is highly important, but they're having um, slave-like conditions go on. Here's one. And this was, oh, Argentina, right. Argentina. Yeah. So the, this agency raided them. And what they found was they're having uh, the farmhands work illegally, preventing them from leaving the fields, and withheld their salaries. <laughs> they had to oh, yeah. detassel corn for 14 hours a day and buy their own food at inflated prices from the company store, which was Sounds probably familiar, modified. Right? Yeah. yeah, like American history, this is indentured servitude uh, in Argentina. Absolutely, and and this is the this is the kind of organization the USDA is defending, giving speed trials for, and it shows their lack of concern for humans. I think that's that's enough right there. They're running slave rings. What do they care Absolutely. about human health? By the way, you're wearing a Ron Paul shirt underneath there, aren't you? I am. Yeah, there it is, Ron Paul for you. Absolutely. I just want to, people might think, what is that? That's Ron Paul. Yeah, it's, it's actually from InfoWars. It's an InfoWars shirt. Oh, right um, It says InfoWars.com right here. Yeah, I've been wearing nice. it for a while. You can see it's worn out. Wearing it around <laughs> Austin here. Got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hugs and a lot of high Good. fives. Yeah, a Good. lot of Ron Paul stickers around here. Everywhere that, that there's a Ron Paul event, it's crowded. There's thousands of people, standing room only. And then, and then... <laughs> Obama launches his presidential campaign, and it, the stadium's abandoned. Yeah, or they have it's Romney. Funny. They actually had to they had to change the camera setup so it looked like the stadium was full when it was only one row of people. Right. And the whole entire stadium's empty. And, it, and you can't do that in the internet age. It was all over Twitter. Right. They had an empty stadium, and then it was just the, the, the few people that actually decided to go hear Romney speak. But at what point, Anthony, does the public wake up and realize this whole thing is theater? That what they're being... Uh, What's being spoon-fed to them by the mainstream media is theater, the security theater that's going on. The TSA is theater. They don't stop any real criminal elements. They've never caught a single terrorist, ever. I think it's already happening. Look at this city of Austin. A lot of these people are, are fully aware of what's going on. You know, like I said, walking around with the Ron Paul shirt, people give you high fives, and the Fed, you know, they, yeah. there's, I've seen people walking around with just signs to say things like that. It's happening. When an entire city is mobilized like that, it means something. It means something really serious. Well, that's true. And, the, and the, the truth about that is only coming out in what used to be called the alternative media. I gotta say, I think we, the alternative media, are really the main, we are the main media now. The only we're, one worth anything. We're the only real journalists actually doing anything, you know? It's, it's like, I know there are real journalists out there who, who work for papers, but they are censored by their editors, by their sponsors. So I'm not, I'm not insulting those individual journalists, but they work in a system that controls what they say and doesn't allow allow them to print no, the truth. No, I've dealt I've dealt with good heart good hearted journalists, and we've had some articles on Monsanto go up on some major uh, news news outlets, and then their editors come and they delete them the next day. Sure. And we've we've fussed about it too. We've made a big deal about it, and people are really s have stood behind it because it's it's no it's no longer the age of censorship. 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 Well, yeah. no, but you get it, Anthony. You get that the the solution is to become the media. Absolutely. To be the media. Yeah. Don't bow down to that media oh, letter to the editor at the New York Times. Forget the New York Times. The New York Times doesn't have any credibility among people who are informed anymore. Look at uh, Gerald Salenti. What does he say about the New York Times? You know, what does he say about Fox News or CNN even? I mean, before they fired uh, Freedom Watch judge Napolitano, Fox News had some credibility. And then they fired that guy who was like the one truth teller left on the network. And yeah. now it's like, forget it. You know? And Talente goes on the major networks, too, and he still says they're crap. Yeah, he's just, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. He's, he's one of my uh, heroes out there. I love him. Yeah, he's excellent. Well, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us here tonight, Anthony, on InfoWars Nightly News. It's been great sharing some thoughts with you. Do you have any, um, any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Well, I think it's time that the information is here. The information is out. Look at this letter. You know, this letter has been given to me by someone who's an extreme activist, and they're ready for this information to go. We have all we need. It's time to mobilize it. It's time to explain to your, your neighbors what it means. And it's time to really understand the depth of it. Because we're, we're, we're 
exiting the information period of this whole entire issue. It's time to take serious action against Monsanto and everything else that's polluting the food supply. Well said, well said, Anthony. And I want to encourage those watching to uh, check out Anthony's website at naturalsociety.com. And he's absolutely right. It's time to focus on the things that matter. Stop watching Snooky on Jersey Shore, people. Turn your attention to things that really matter. Get into the documentation. Get into the evidence that proves collusion between Monsanto and the USDA that went on for years and it was well known and well documented. Now, these documents have come out thanks to your efforts and, and those who, who, the whistleblowers who gave you those documents. This is now uh, factual on the record information. And you're going to keep getting this kind of report right here on Infowars.com with Alex Jones, myself filling in from time to time, contributing writers like Anthony Gucciardi, and of course the, the regulars, Kurt Nimmo, Paul Joseph Watson, and many others. So thank you for joining us today. And by the way, there is a 15-day free trial that you can get at any time. Become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Get the videos instantly streamed to your computer or your mobile device. Watch anytime, 24-7, no limitations. You can also cancel anytime, no strings attached. Check it out. It's the best value for truthful information available anywhere on the Internet. Thanks for joining us today. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex Jones on InfoWars Nightly News. Have a great weekend, everybody.